Hello and welcome. This is your city in action here on Salina Media Connection. I'm your host, Todd Pittenger from the Rockingham Media Group of Radio Stations and the Rockingham Media News Network. We carry news on 41 stations across Kansas, most notably, though, here in Salina News Radio 1150 KSAL. Fun show, exciting. Well, I don't know, maybe not fun, <laughs> maybe not exciting. To Martha and myself, it will be fun, exciting, but I promise it will be informational. Big show lined up today. Martha Tasker, Director of utilities for the city of Salina. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Todd. I, I look forward Excellent. to any opportunity to talk about the great things going on in our community. Well, let's dive right into it. Let's talk about some of the great things. Um, let me start. There's many things I can talk to you with. Before we're done, I want to talk to you. I want to get an update on the contamination at the Salina Airport. That's been going on over a decade. I'll talk about that. Let me start with the river project. Okay. That's been going on for quite a while now as well. Give me a status of that. What's happening with that? Um, on the river project, we um, have been through our, our most of our public outreach where right. we've talked to the community and grabbed opinions from them. Uh, we um, put in place a steering committee, which was roughly about 25 individuals that we met with on a, on a monthly basis and got their opinions and ideas before we took it to the public. And we still have some work to do with right. them. Uh, where we're at right now is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had... Uh, uh, offered us some funding for mm -hmm. up to 10 million for construction. Wow. And, um, but no money ever comes without uh, effort. That's nothing, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? <laughs> no free money. <laughs> but, uh, but it really, um, the first part of that is mm -hmm. what they call is a feasibility study where uh -huh. they actually go through and look at how they might make improvements to the river channel and right. what is called as a section 1135 ecosystem project. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, the reason we fall into that category is when the flood control levee was constructed back in the early 60s, uh, the main part of the channel through the city was cut off and mm -hmm. the flow was limited right. and that channel filled up with sediment. And so that is an unintended consequence and the Corps takes some ownership for right. that and that's how we fall into play for this uh, um, up to 10 million in construction funding. So the first part of that is this feasibility study that mm -hmm. they're just embarking on and what they're looking at is how do we improve the habitat right. and uh, ecosystem through that and uh, for some reason the core is incredibly busy right now with uh, Flooding. a flood right. yes. and so they were just had their contracts and such and had got through some of that portion of the work mm -hmm. and uh, here we are in the middle of a flood, and I, I can't imagine what that means for them. Yeah, it's just... yeah absolutely. I, I would totally agree with you. Tell us exactly now, a number of years ago, there was an idea, there was a grandiose idea where mm -hmm. there was going to be a total, complete refurbishment of the river, almost like a San Antonio river walk kind of thing. That has been scaled back considerably, correct? What we've done is by going out to this uh, steering committee, right. the group of about 25 individuals, uh, what I like to say is they've helped us right-size the project yes, for our community. That's, uh, I think that's a great term. And um, I was a little nervous when we talked about 25 members to get opinions right. from. That's right, yeah. But uh, honestly, the group that we had were fantastic. They had a lot of common sense and, and are interested in the community and moving it forward. And so they've been a lot of help in bringing us back to reality and, right. and really... Uh, doing things that make sense for our community and uh, what's first and most important is to get the water flowing. Totally agree. Get, get the soot and the sediment out of there, mm -hmm. get the water flowing again, right? And, and that's really a part that the core plays an important part in because their piece of the funding is for cleaning the sediment out and enhancing the ecosystem. So the area that we might call the urban area mm -hmm. around the Tony's Pizza Event Center and right. down to Iron Avenue mm -hmm really isn't the part they care about. Right. They care about on each end, for right. lack of better term. Correct. So that's, um, and we really would like to use their money to clean the sediment out right. because that's a great savings for, for the community. So it's important that we work with them on this project. So they're, um, to, on one hand, they're great to have as a partner, right. but. Um, on the other hand, you don't want your hands to be tied also, that's, correct? I'm trying to say that right. politely, yes, but right. you know, we're working with them on their schedule. And uh, they get drawn a lot of different ways, right. and uh, I'm sure they would just as soon not be working on this right. flood on the Missouri River. But sure. uh, 
uh, I believe they'll get going on our project and we need a little information from them before we wrap right. up our design and our first phase will really about could be cutting a channel to get the water into the downtown urban area where we might build mm -hmm. you know one phase that would right. really be be beautiful and, right. and attractive and it could be at iron and uh, uh, Fourth Street area. Yeah, kind of be by the community theater in that area. That area. And I think at a minimum, what we'll get, the, we will get the water flowing again, and maybe there'll be a nice, like, like the levee trail, maybe a trail similar to that that follows the river. Is that and, correct? And the trail is, we're using a KDOT standard, so it's it's a fairly costly trail. And right. in fact, uh, middle of next month, I'll I'll learn exactly how costly that is because the engineers will be in town and reviewing. Right the trail with uh, with city staff and and friends of the river and uh, we um, I don't believe we'll be able to afford the entire trail right. it will come in increments Baby like the steps, rest of right. the project but some good news we did get uh, about I think it's about hundred eighty thousand for some trail from KDOT right. for 2020 mm -hmm. so that'll propose to be constructed uh, from on the South Ohio leg mm -hmm. uh, to the west towards the YMCA so right. that's that's nice, and, Absolutely, yes. and then we'll be uh, tying into that same process and program, you know, in additional yes. years looking for more trail, and we're, we're, we really need a plan in hand right. so that we can go out. There's other opportunities to right. seek funding for that trail, sure. so we'll be um, beating the bushes right. in the near future once we have a plan and can show them exactly what we want to build and the total cost. Is there so any sort we'll be of a, there. a timetable for some of this? Right now, our goal, and it really depends a little bit upon the U.S. Army Corps and how they come along with getting through right. what they're dealing sure. with and get their part of the work done, but our, our goal was to be uh, finishing up our design in 2019, going back to our steering committee and the public and just showing them some of our costs right. and then getting their opinion on what should we build. What should we, and, what, and what shouldn't we build also, right? Right, right. What should we build? What should we not build? Right. And we have X dollars to spend. Yeah. Where what, what would you like to see built? And we've really been trying to focus those decisions on from the community. And it's really been pretty exciting to go to the public meetings. And uh, and I I believe we've really got a lot of good input right. and a lot of common sense going on, which is what we typically see in in Kansas. Absolutely. Again, this is your city in action. Here on Salina Media Connection, I'm your host, Todd Pittenger, from the Rocking M Media Group of Radio Stations, Martha Tasker from the City of Salina, Director of Utilities, our special guest today. Let's talk about water and or wastewater. You are responsible for our water supply. But when I turn on my tap and I get a drink, if that water is nasty, I blame you, right? That's correct. Tell me about <laughs> how that process works and how we might potentially, do we need and are we going to get a new wastewater plant here in Salina? Right. I'll start with the water side. Right. And one of the um, projects that I've been working on is replacing water mains. Right. And um, some of those are really old, right? They are. Downtown, we replaced hundred some years plus, right? Late 1886, 87 wow. type. So um, we're replacing that under the streetscape right. project. And we have some um, cast iron pipe that was installed in the late 50s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it just tends to fill with uh, cro or, uh, the minerals right. attach inside yep. and discolor and make some nasty water. Right. And for the calls that I've got the, the most complain about is mm -hmm. water quality. Right. And so when we do an area and we get some water mains replaced, mm -hmm. uh, they call me and are almost want to have a party. Really? It they, makes that much it difference. It's a huge difference, huh? But uh, when you have started with 275 miles of this old pipe we're right. trying to work where we get the most complaints yes and it costs about a little over a hundred dollars a foot mm -hmm. to replace that right. pipe it's a it's a challenge to kind of decide right. where to go next so having our citizens call and let us know when they have water quality has been critical and help us make decisions mm -hmm. and uh, we will have spent about 16 million when we finish the projects right now. We have four million under construction mm -hmm. in the city right now, right. two local contractors. 
one Stevens Contractors and Smoky Hill are constructing those projects. So that's the one that seems to get people most excited right. when they get a new water main out front. Yeah, they're not excited while it's happening and while <laughs> everything's torn up, but once it's done and they turn on their faucet or they go to take a shower, they are very excited. Or they do their laundry right. and they have clean water. So, and, and I understand discolored water, right. I don't, right. it's not something I'm proud of and no. to have at their tap, right. but it's but those, truly. Though it's discolored, it is safe to drink, right? It is it, safe it, to yes. drink, but you know, it's just yeah, doesn't look that right. appealing. So I can't blame a customer for being upset, but Absolutely. we truly are working on that right. and we're making some progress. And then uh, talking about our wastewater plant, right. it was constructed, the last upgrade was uh, in the 1990. Mm -hmm. So we are almost 30, 30, years, years, right. 30 years old. And you might envision that a, a wastewater plant is a pretty, a, corrosive, yes, aggressive location. Yes. And, and I think the technology in the industry probably has changed in 30 years. It has changed. There's a lot of efficiency and the regulations change. Right. Now the ex expectation is to remove uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, which mm -hmm. once it makes into river channel, uh, tends to grow algae right. in different uh, pro or plant life mm -hmm. that uh, sucks up the oxygen and right. makes life miserable for the aquatic right. life. So. There's new requirements, and as that nitrogen and phosphorus finds its way right. down to the ocean, it creates dead zones. So they've been, that's our right. new requirement, and we'll be working on that. Our plant, um, so we, we've been uh, avoiding spending money on structures that right. won't have a purpose in the future. Yep. And uh, we have the design of that project in 2020, and we have right. construction in uh, 2021 and 2022, and it'll bring us up to up to date with the new requirements and uh, get us less structures. All right, let me ask you this. This thought just came to me. We draw our drinking water from the Smoky Hill River, that river that's currently not flowing and is has all that sediment in it. Once we get the sediment out and the river gets to flowing, will that have an impact on the water that we pull in? We actually moved our water intake in, in the uh, in the 80s, right. we moved it out to the main river channel. Okay. So, right. and the reason we moved it is because the sediment. Because it was, it it for lack up of a better word, it got so icky in there, right? It got icky and yeah. the water couldn't find its way through. We couldn't pull water right. out on right. a consistent basis. So, so we moved we out. So once we flowing again, can we move it back if, if you want and or need to? I doubt that we will because we're limited on the volume of water we right. can bring through our channel and right. it's much fresher water out there on the right. main channel Correct. where we pull the water now right. at, at the different rates. So I don't envision moving it back since we've invested and moved it out right. there. And so uh, the wastewater plant uh, discharges uh, uh, on the downstream right. side, we pull our water upstream Stream. of the discharge, but discharge it downstream, right? Discharge it downstream. But the wastewater plants definitely met its useful life. Right. So we have that project coming right. in the future. So what do we do? Do we refurbish that or do we build new? What, what's better? Uh, at this point in time, we're, uh, we're going to keep the structures that were built in the mm -hmm. mid to late oh, 80, or 90s. Right. We're going to keep all of those in service. Mm -hmm and build some different structures. The right. process is a little different. We'll be able to delete part of those, but every structure that can have a useful purpose in the new scheme will remain, which is probably over half our structures. So we'll, we'll save money and right. use the existing basins. Very good. Again, this is your city in action here on Salina Media Connection. I'm your host, Todd Pittenger, Martha Tasker, Utilities Director from the Salina, City of Salina, joining us today on the program. Final question for you. Let's talk about the contamination out at the former Schilling Air Force Base, now the Salina Airport Industrial Area or the Salina Municipal Airport, Salina Regional Airport. Right. I, the, through, my, through my term as news director, it has went through literally those names. So, uh, it was the Salina Airport Industrial Area. It was the Salina Municipal Airport. Now I believe Salina Regional Airport because it really is a regional it airport. Is. But let's talk about the contamination. This has been going on for over a decade. And first of all, explain to me exactly what it is. I know it's left over from when the Air Force used it as an Air Force base, correct? Yes, um, the Air Force was active in the uh, mid-1940s through uh, mid 60s and then when it closed um, basically the uh, property out there was given to either the Salina Airport Authority right. 
K-State or USD 305 or the city. Right, and they basically <laughs> just deeded it over to them, gave that, it to them, right? That's correct. That's a great deal, right? <laughs> it is a good deal. And uh, Until you, and, you dig deep, right? <laughs> until you look under the surface. Right. And so basically the contamination is really from degreasing the, right. the planes back in the day and, and that finding right. its... <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, finding its way into the, into the soil right. and then eventually into the groundwater. So basically it's solvents and things they were spraying on the aircraft and then, for lack of a better term, because they didn't even really know any better back then, right. they were just letting it run off into the ditch, right? Yes, and they were fighting a war. Right, yeah. They had other things so to do. So their last concern was some solvent draining into a ditch, right? And, and we've all learned a lot over time right. what we thought was acceptable and right. safe. Mm -hmm. We now know isn't, so right. that's, that's the case. Right. And so we've been working for basically the last four and a half to five years to really determine what is the extent of that contamination. Right. Uh, is it in the soil, the groundwater, the bedrock, and what's the, the locations, right. the size of the areas, and all of that's been established. Mm -hmm. So we've gathered lots of data, and then our consultant, uh, Dragon Corporation, has in, completed a feasibility study which uh, takes a look at how we might remediate all of those areas. Right. And so then that study has been submitted to the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. And we've been a great partner with the city on this, correct? Yes, yes. they have. They are, are the ones that are assigned the, to eventually develop this corrective action decision, which right. really defines what's going to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of us are anxiously awaiting a draft right. copy of that, that the schedule was March 22nd mm -hmm. today. We haven't received it yet, but it's a, you know, looking It'll be at a comprehensive document. It will, and looking at it from KDHE standpoint, this is a big deal for them. Absolutely. Yes. And so I feel it's important that they make sure that it's correct and accurate right. and thorough. And but we are anxiously right. awaiting it because we need to turn it around quickly and yeah. move forward. And then, uh, with that in mind, the thought was to have a. A public meeting, which KDHE will be right. um, controlling the meeting and providing the information about what's in this corrective action decision. And we've had several public we meetings have. over the years leading up to this, just keeping everybody in the loop, so to speak. Right. That, that's correct. But this will this will be the big one. The big one. The big one right. with uh, the treatment options right. for the different locations and then the overall cost and concept. Right. So it's a very important document, right. and then it'll carry on. And then once that is. Uh, completed it will you know they have it completed it will go out to right. the public for them to review prior to this public meeting we have it scheduled for may 1st but until we get the document right. in hand we can't so that's a very uh, that's tentative. not firm that's a very tentative schedule very tentative right. but uh you have to set deadlines right. and get things on calendar sure, so absolutely. everyone can be there so that's scheduled and then once that's done the intent is to go back to mediation which is what was right. the process we used uh in the first place right. to, to learn who's going to pay what Correct. share and yes. how to move forward. So, And, and at this point, um, I, think, I think it's fair to say it's going to be very expensive. We know that. Millions of dollars. At this point, it's went to court. It's went to mediation. But I think that the federal government has been pretty, a pretty good partner. So far, they've paid for the vast majority of everything so far. Correct? To date, they have paid 90% uh, of the right. costs, and the city at large has paid 10%. Right. And, uh, I just looked at our balance sheets today. We had a meeting with the four CEOs or right. from the, the different the four groups. four interested properties, right? Yes, yeah. and uh, we still have a little over two million left out of our original budget, and we've been able to do some additional work. So right. I believe we've been very good very stewards. Very frugal with what we've done. Yes. Yes, with their with the, the government's money and our money. Right. So I I hope they will look at that and understand that we've been how we would proceed yes, forward. That we're very careful with the dollars and, right. and spend them wisely. Uh, now at one point there was a little bit of concern that uh, the, the plume, or one of the plumes at least, some of the contamination was getting close to one of the city water wells. Is that it, still a concern or not? It, it seems to be holding its own out there and it, it was really about a mile away right. or a little over a mile, but, and the groundwater does not move quickly, but it's not right. something that the closer it gets to our well, the little the, more concerning the, it gets. Right? Then the yes. faster it will move because right. if we use our well, it'll, it'll we'll kind of pull suck it, it that we'll way, pull right? it towards there. So it, that has slowed down, right. and the plumes uh, we have our arms around exactly how big they are. Right. And for me, what was interesting is that uh, 
we're now looking at um, treatment for the soil, mm -hmm. the groundwater, and the bedrock. Oh, very nice. And we actually, you can actually pump water out of a rock. I did not know that. I didn't know that either, but you can. So you can get blood from a stone, huh? <laughs> and so basically we do have some contamination in the bedrock. So we've, we've looked at all, they have a, several alternatives, every, mm -hmm. anything from the standard pump and treat. Right. And use some type of uh, air stripper or right. carbon to treat it. Isn't there even something where you can shoot some sort of bacteria in there yes. or something? Yes, right? and you could build a, a wall that would prevent would kind of going any further. Right? Prevent it from going any further, and the barrier walls and right. uh, a thermal process mm -hmm. where you heat the soil. Right. Or you could um, actually do some type of a pump and recirculation right. system where you bang it out and pump it in. We looked at uh, removing the soil and we used, because uh, there's a lot of structures. And, right, yeah. If you envision digging down several feet. Mm -hmm. uh, For acres and acres. <laughs> so uh, out near uh, uh, K-State uh, Poly. Inter Interstate 135 in that area also, right? Polytechnics, mm -hmm. we actually used these, I believe they were six foot diameter augers mm -hmm. to see if we could drill a hole, mm -hmm. get the contaminated soil out and then get it filled back in mm -hmm. because if you can imagine, that's a lot less disruption. Right. If you're using a track hoe or a backhoe, right. you've got some side slopes and mm -hmm. a tremendous area, right. which probably would not work well next to some of the buildings. So we yeah, actually found that those giant augers to be a successful way to move the soil. Right. So we did some pilot testing mm -hmm. and with the different treatment processes. So right. we have some level of comfort right. about will they work. Right. All right, worst case scenario, if that plume would get to one of the city water wells, with the equipment we have, can we still filter it and the water would still be safe? The uh, contamination would have to be at a fairly high level because right. our treatment plant is designed to treat the TCE, mm -hmm. which was also in a part of the uh, dry cleaners products downtown. Right. Mm -hmm. And we put the air strippers in 2000. So we have treatment there to deal with that kind of contamination. The, um, downtown area that uh, those were put in for right. was for the underground storage tanks, right. benzene, mm -hmm. dry cleaners. And uh, we're finding that that's been pretty successful mm -hmm. because we're just seeing very small right. trace amounts making it to the water treatment plant. So we're not going to need it anyway, right? So we're we going to stop that contamination. And that's right. It, right. I do not want to <laughs> test that system, you know, because right. uh, uh, for small amounts, we could treat it and we'd be safe and it's not going right. to be there, right. not be there today right. and show up tomorrow, right. Right. we'll know about it. Absolutely. But very yes. small numbers we could treat right. because our other contamination is pretty much And at this point it's still a with. mile away and it has slowed down, so it's not a concern. No, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it is a concern, but it's not a concern. It's not imminent that right. it's a, a, you know, an right. accident waiting to happen right. tomorrow. We have some time to do the right thing, get it cleaned up and um, be way, be a way ahead of it, and that's our goal. We we do not want it to get to our Absolutely. downtown well field. Anything else we should touch on before? Anything else you want to touch on before I let you go? Um, we talked a little bit about water. We've been uh, taking a look at our uh, sanitary sewer system. Okay. Yeah. Um, downtown area, we have areas where the sewers in the alley, like behind Santa Fe, mm -hmm. not a lot of area to work. So right. we've been cleaning those and running a camera through them. And then we've been using technology that's called cured in place pipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that what you're talking about? There's like like a, a little grate, and then underneath there is a pipe. I know right behind our building there's a, a little grate, and right underneath there there's a, a pipe. And I know when it rains really really hard, it, it tends to fill up pretty quickly, but then it drains pretty quickly. That also. would be our storm right. sewer, and right. I, what I'm looking at right. is our sanitary so sewer okay. that's maybe 15, 20 feet deep. So right. if you could imagine trying to excavate down Something between that deep down yes and so using this cured in place technology yeah. you really can't send somebody down there right it's not a, it's not a good place it's not a safe place right. so we're able to use this technology and bring the life back to the pipe for maybe a, i'd say a fourth or less okay. of what it would cost if we to, were trying to, to replace, try to replace it. it right so we're trying we're doing a lot of that work right now uh cleaning inspecting and doing that to and really our sewer system is as old as our water system right. but yeah. i've been pleased that it's pleasantly surprised maybe yeah. yes that would be a good mm -hmm. word too very 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 happy to see that we're not running into areas where we need to replace blocks of pipe below ground we feel pretty good we've had a few point repairs where we do have to excavate and make improvements but uh saving lots and lots of dollars and getting a lot more work done so well, you've got a lot on your plate right now 
with, and, with, with the contamination, the river project, the things going on downtown, the water treatment plant, the sewer. How do you find time to get it all done in a day? Well, they're all fun things, so <laughs> I enjoy well, working fun, on them. Fun things to you, maybe. But <laughs> they are. They are, and truly, these are projects that I've been working on for years. Right, so absolutely. I'm, I'm finally getting to, to the part to where you actually get to see something. Some actually some fruits of your labor maybe starting to maybe uh, maybe a little light at the end of the tunnel, huh? I and do. And the light's not a train. It's not a train, <laughs> but it is great to, to work on projects and, right. and to actually see them Especially come into place. Especially long term projects that have been going on for years, you're right, big project. And it's, uh, you're right, it's fun to finally see Fun and rewarding for you, someone who's been involved, to see these projects slowly but surely starting to come to life, right? And the wastewater treatment plant and the water treatment plants and my time with Wilson Engineers here in Salina, I did a lot of work on those projects. Right. So I like to tell everybody I've seen them from the inside out <laughs> and know what they look like. Yeah. And, and You're so, the only one I know that it gets this excited about a new wastewater plant. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, at work we talk about what we're doing and I say, well, I'm going to go to a conference and look at wastewater plant. And I said, it's just like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, anybody else want to go? <laughs> uh, you know, I think I'm busy that day. <laughs> they, they don't find it quite as fascinating as I do, but uh, a treatment plant, a wastewater plant, and the biology, water plant, right. the chemistry, um, that's all... That's all fun for me, and it's enjoyable right. to see it work at the end of the end of the project, and and be an asset to our community. Well, Martha, you are an asset to our community with everything you do, the knowledge that you do, and all of the things you do that behind the scenes that I don't even know that you do every day. All I know is when I turn on my water, I have clean drinking water, and I have no worries. So thank you for that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear yes. that. That's that's a case because that's our goal is to have happy customers. Martha Tasker, Director of Utilities for the City of. Salina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Your City in Action here on Salina Media Connection.